Okay, uh, good morning everyone, good to see you all in class. Uh, before we begin class, can somebody lead us in prayer please? Kanan, can you lead us in prayer? Okay, let's pray. Father, we thank you for uh, and yet another day that you've added into our lives. We thank you, God, for the gift of life. We thank you for your word. Your word is truth. Your word is life. Your word is uh, a light to our feet, God. And we thank you that your light, your word guides us and leads us into all truth. Your word encourages us. It strengthens us. It builds us, God. We thank you for giving us your word, God. We thank you. We praise you. We pray that even as uh, uh, we have this precious words of life, that we would, uh, God, we would meditate on it. God, that will become part of our very being. That our whole being will be filled with your word. Our minds will be renewed by your word, God. That we will be, be people who live by your word, by the truths of your word. We will walk in your truth, God, so that we can live triumphant and victorious and prosperous lives, God. Overcoming every challenge by your word, by speaking your word, God. That we will see the supernatural in our natural by declaring your word over every circumstance, God. We thank you. We pray that even as we look into your word this morning, that, oh God, you would speak to us, that you would reveal your truths to us and minister to us, Holy Spirit, we pray. We thank you. We bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so last week um, we looked at chapter. Which are the chapters that we looked at? No problem, Kanan. I, I, I understand sometimes there'll be connectivity issues or there'll be a lot of noise around. No, perfectly fine. So what is the chapters we uh, looked at last week? Which book are we studying? You can type your answers in the chat section for Timothy. Okay, which Timothy? First Timothy, second Timothy, are we studying? Are we waiting for answers? No answers? Which Timothy are we studying? First Timothy or second Timothy? Okay, we're studying First Timothy. I don't know if anyone is in class. Uh, no answers. Okay, we're studying First Timothy now. Uh, which chapter did we look at last week? Which chapters did we look at last week? Hi, Kiran. Welcome to class. I'm just asking them uh, which chapters we studied last week from First Timothy. Chapters? I'm waiting for someone to answer. Okay, we studied uh, no answers, chapters two and three. I hope all of you are there with uh, me in class or uh, because I'm just seeing your uh, images there, but I hope you are there because I'm getting no get, not getting any answers as well. Okay, we looked at First Timothy uh, chapters two and three. In chapter two, we just saw, you know, Paul um, telling Timothy to encourage men and women um, you know, to pray for everyone, especially for um, uh, leaders. And he is also telling them how to pray. Um, what is the attitude um, to have, uh, you know, when they pray. And he's saying that uh, the reason why they need to pray is so that they can live peaceful and quiet lives. 
and live in all godliness and reverence towards God. Okay, so we saw that in uh, chapter two. And um, what is the key takeaway for chapter two? It's what I just mentioned, okay, that, uh, you know, we need to pray for everyone, all people, everywhere, uh, and also for kings, those in authority, so that we can live quiet, peaceful lives in all uh, godliness, okay? Then we went on to chapter 3. Uh, any idea what we studied in chapter 3? In chapter 3, what does Paul tell Timothy? Or what is he listing out in chapter 2? Okay, he's talking about the leadership. Thank you. Spiritual leadership. And he's basically listing out the qualities or the qualifications uh, that a deacon, that a bishop should have. Uh, or basically those who are providing spiritual leadership in the uh, church. Okay, so that's what he's talking about in chapter 3. Okay, and then he talks about the proper conduct in the house of God, uh, and uh, he ends with that. Okay, he ends with a hymn. Now we'll move on to chapter four. Okay, so I would request all of you to open your Bibles uh, to First Timothy chapter four, and can somebody read uh, verses one to five, please? First Timothy chapter four, verses one to five. Now the Spirit expressly says that from the uh, in the latter uh, in the latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to uh, deceiving uh, spirit and doctrines of demons, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their own consequence hypocrisy uh, hypo hypocrisy having their own conscience with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing is not be refused it, uh, if it is received with Thanksgiving, for it is satisfied by the word of God and prayer. Okay, thank you, Prince. So now Paul is once again uh, reminding or warning Timothy about the work of uh, deceiving spirits and uh, demons that promote all kind of wrong teaching and ideas that draw people away from their faith or away from the truth of the doctrines or the truth of God's word or the truth of what they have been um, taught. Okay, So Paul is strictly telling uh, Timothy uh, to be alert. Okay, He's telling him to be alert, uh, which means to be aware, um, to be warned, and identify such people. Uh, don't be wavered, uh, but be alert about who is around you, what teachings they're bringing and what is um, happening, okay? So we know that these false teachers um, and false doctrines um, and false teachings were present at the churches of uh, Ephesus. Uh, and as, as I mentioned uh, in the introduction, this was not people who were basically from outside. Of course, there was a lot of Gnosticism that was very prevalent uh, uh, during Paul's time. So there was false teaching that was outside the church, but there were also false teachers who were believers, who were, you know, so-called Christians who were part of the church, who were, you know, uh, just spreading out some Jewish fables. Jewish fables means Jewish stories which are not true, uh, you know, that are not part of the Old Testament, that they were just bringing up uh, Jewish genealogies, that they were adding on to the genealogies. And so Paul is saying, you know, be alert, be aware of uh, uh, these kind of uh, people. And so he's saying that, you know, um, uh, 
you know, these men and women who are empowered by the deceiving spirits and demonic powers are promoting such teachings. Because in verse 1, he says, uh, you know, um, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Okay, so who is giving heed that there are few men, women who are, uh, you know, listening uh, to these uh, uh, false teachings, they are, and people who are teaching these are empowered by uh, deceiving spirits and demonic powers, and hence they are promoting such uh, uh, teachings. And then he says that, you know, these people speaking lies in hypocrisy was to have their own conscience smeared with a hot iron okay so speaking lies in hypocrisy um, is you know he's describing those who depart from the faith or those who are part of the faith who go away from the faith they are the ones who are willingly embracing every kind of false teaching just to justify their sin okay they know they're sinning that they're going away from the faith but to justify their sin and their pride you know they are uh, you know bringing about these false teaching it also refers to those uh, who claim to teach the bible uh, you know while they're just using it to promote their own personal ideas or agenda so these teachers uh, who are teaching these false te uh, teachings, they actually are part of the church and they are also, some of them are leaders, some of them are teaching God's word. So it's, they're just claiming as if they're, they're teaching what is in God's word, uh, but they're teaching all of these false teachings to support their own ideas and agendas, okay? So they're speaking lies in hypocrisy, okay? Being hypocrites, that means they are, showing themselves to be teaching God's word, but yet they're speaking uh, lies, they're speaking things that are empowered by the deceiving spirits and by demons uh, because they want to cover up their own sin and their own pride. And it, uh, Paul says, you know, they have their own conscience seared. Okay, the conscience is, you know, our inner voice that tells us what is right or what is wrong. So when we do something that is wrong, our conscience, you know, immediately tells us, hey, what you said was wrong, what you did was wrong, what you watched is uh, wrong, or what you thought was wrong. So our conscience is something that, you know, blows the whistle when we do something that is uh, uh, wrong. Okay, so to say blows the whistle. Okay. Um, so these people's conscience at one point of time, you know, would have told them that what they are listening to, what they are teaching, or what they are adhering to is not right, is not according to God's word, is not according to the doctrines that uh, are in God's word or have been taught to them. Um, but, you know, yet they go ahead and they depart from the truth um, and now, you know, their conscience is smeared as like as an iron, which means, you know, when you put hot iron on your uh, on your uh, uh, shirt or your uh, uh, dress or whatever you're going to wear, and it's so hot that it catches and it just tears your, uh, you know, uh, your, uh, your 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 the cloth or your dress or your shirt that you're ironing. So it's uh, the same way, you know, when we depart from the truth. Uh, and we don't listen to our conscience, our conscience is dead in that area. Now, for example, you know, some people can constantly uh, be using bad word for every sentence that they speak. It does not necessarily have to be when they're angry or when they're fighting with somebody or, you know, when they are uh, disappointed about something. Even if they're just normally talking about normal day-to-day -day things in a very casual way, you will see them just using some, you know, uh, some... Uh, 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 bad words or some uh, filthy words. Um, and so we see that their conscience is smeared in that area uh, or smeared in that area. So to say the conscience is dead in that area. That means they don't just feel anything about using those words. Uh, for some of us, uh, you know, um, or for some of them uh, who constantly are smoking, you know, they begin from uh, morning, they go through the day, they become like chimney pots, you know, just uh, smoking and smoking. Their conscience is so dead to that 
uh, to that addiction or to that uh, uh, that problem of smoking or for those who are drinking or those who are taking drugs you know um, work with I work with drug addicts and uh, they used to come to our uh, center where we used to have sessions therapy sessions for them where we used to uh, do some medical treatment for them and you know young young boys coming they're just wearing their jeans pan but when they pull up their jeans pan you know their legs are this fat like elephant's leg because it's uh, you know they're injecting there and it's caught pus and it's ga caught gangrene they know that you know they have to ampute or that means they have to cut off that part of that leg but still they continue injecting you know the same they're taking the same drugs the same leg why because their conscience is so dead to that part of them you know but even if it's terrorists who just go shooting you know um, they, they just shoot randomly. They don't see whether it's a pregnant woman, a small child, a baby. Why? Because their conscience is, is so dead to that area. So it's like, you know, when your nerve endings of your any part of your body, you know, when they are dead, you cannot feel uh, the touch or you cannot feel, you know, yeah, that's not sensitive. So if the nerve ending of this part of my finger is dead, if I put my hand in very, very hot, something that's very very hot hot water or a hot vessel i won't feel the pain okay because the nerve endings there are dead so he's saying that these people you know they're so dead to the truth they've gone away they've not listened to their conscience when their conscience was telling them our conscience will tell us a couple of times but when we don't listen our conscience becomes dead to that part of us and so we continue doing those things and you know other people say can't that person even realize or understand what they're doing is wrong they, they won't be able to because their conscience is uh, dead. So these people's conscience are dead to the truth. And so they go about teaching all of these false teaching and living as if, you know, they are uh, good believers, good Christians, living according to the truth of God's uh, word. And Paul is saying that such people will not lead us to God because then they will not be able to perceive the truth and will not be able to say right from wrong. Okay. And then he goes on to say that uh, in verse 3, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. So these kind of people who are bringing about these false teachings, these false teachers, um, those who are empowered by deceiving spirits and Satan, they forbid people to marry and they command them to abstain from certain kinds of food. So there's trying to bring about some legalistic uh, teaching or legalistic way of life, you know, that the Jews um, followed. Why? Because they have departed from the uh, faith. Um, and they bring in about, they bring in their own man-made rules. And uh, they say that this is justified. These rules are justified in uh, God's sight. And that, and they tell the people that if you want to be more holy before God, you know, then you shouldn't marry and you shouldn't eat certain kind of, uh, food okay but Paul instead lets us know that those who know the truth who believe the truth can eat any kind of food uh, you know uh, all we do is sanctify it and cleanse it with the word of God and prayer so that's what Paul is saying in uh, in verse um, four he's saying for every creature of God is good and nothing is to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving for it is sanctified by the word of God and Prayer. So Paul is saying you can eat any kind of food. All we need to do is just, you know, have it uh, sanctified and cleansed. And how do you do it? The word of God and through prayer. And that is why we say grace before uh, we say a prayer before we um, eat. Okay. Uh, and we look at how Paul is talking again here about conscience. He's been talking about conscience from uh, chapter 1. And he again repeats this. Uh, and he talk about it in the rest of his epistle to uh, Timothy. Okay. And we also know that, uh, you know, it's okay for people to marry. It's not something that's against God or it's not something that's unholy. Because we see that the institution of marriage was uh, instituted by God in Genesis. Okay. And um, he says, if you, uh, if you instruct the brethren in these things, uh, you will be a good minister of Christ Jesus. So that he, he goes on to verse uh, 6, because somebody can read verse 6, please. 
Okay. If you explain these things to the brothers and sisters, Timothy, you will be a worthy servant of Christ Jesus, one who is nourished, nourished by the message of faith and the good teaching you have followed. Thank you. So Paul goes on to tell uh, Timothy that uh, in the view of all of this demonic activity uh, in promoting wrong doctrines uh, to deceive people and to draw people away from the faith. Now Timothy's role and the role of all the spiritual leaders, remember in, in chapter uh, three, he enlists about the spiritual leaders and the qualifications. So he's saying that, you know, all of the spiritual leaders are to instruct the believers and nourish them in the words of faith and sound doctrine. So instruct, that means teach, keep on teaching them, preach to them, you know, uh, tell them what God's word uh, talks about these various things. And he says, when you do that, you will be a good minister okay so as believers we need to nourish people or feed people or teach people the words of faith and um, good doctrine because it is so important it is so vital for believers to know the truth uh, especially in the times that we are um, living now and the best way uh, to overcome uh, you know false teachings and errors that are there is to not keep talking about the false teachers or their false teaching or saying, you know, this and that about them, but is to establish the people in the truth. So sometimes we waste our time in just telling people, you know, these are the false teachers that are happening around the world. This is a false teaching. So people get more interested. They want to go listen. And then sometimes they so get so deeper into it. And if they're not strong in God, it can, you know, get them, uh, uh, the deceiver, Satan can twist and turn the truth for them. And they can get, uh, you know, swayed away or caught up in those teachings. So instead of talking about all the false teachers and all the errors that are there in the present world, uh, uh, Paul is telling Timothy, you know, teach people about the truth. So we need to also teach people about the truth, establish them in the truth. So when they are, uh, you know, confronted with false teachings, they will know the truth in God's word and they'll be able to overcome the false teachings. So a good minister, Paul, Paul saying here, first of all, is one who is established in the truth himself or herself. So before we minister to people, we need to be uh, established in the truth of God's word, which means we have to read our Bibles, we have to meditate, we have to, you know, um, get a clear, good understanding of scripture, interpret it in the right way, uh, you know, and um, we need to be strong in uh, in our faith, in our doctrines, and not only be strong in them, but also follow them in the way that we live in our own life. When we do that, we will be able to instruct and um, nourish other people in the truth. So we need to do first and then teach. We need to follow what we are um, learning or studying, and then we can instruct others. Okay, because when we do it, we will be able to better able to explain to others and we can also nourish others. Okay, we will move on to verses seven to nine. So, can somebody read verses seven to nine, please? Shall I read, ma'am? Yes, go ahead, Kiran. But reject, reject profound and old webs. Fables and exercise yourself towards godliness. For bo bodily exercise, profit a little, but godly godliness is profitable for all things, having promise of the life that now is and of the which is to come. This is a faithful saying and worthily worth, worthily of all acceptance. Thank you. So here, um, Paul is uh, going on to tell Timothy that reject, okay, reject lies, reject those things that are not truth. Why reject it? Because it's not going to help anyone. Okay, he goes on to tell him later on that, you know, don't talk about it. It's not really worth 
talking about all of these things because it's going to end up in just uh, you know arguments and strife which is not going to help anybody but just teach the word of god because that is going to strengthen build encourage and uh, you know uh, put people uh, uh, deeper into the truth of uh, of god's word okay so reject lies and does not help anybody he says reject profane and old wife fables okay so the priority must be to teach god's word and not the words of man all the stories that are you know being passed on people are teaching um so paul is uh, cautioning timothy to focus on teaching god's word and not on the things that are coming from man um so the greatest effort we must we must put in is to teach god's word and not just focus on what people around us are saying and then he goes on to tell um, uh, timothy exercise yourself towards uh, godliness that means train yourself towards godliness or train yourself towards holiness we know that godliness and holiness and uh, growth in spiritual things uh, you know doesn't come automatically but it comes through training it's a process okay and we know that training is not generally easy um it requires a lot of discipline it requires a lot of uh, uh hard work uh, sacrifice you know um so uh, he's here actually talking about you know bodily exercise profits a little but godliness is profitable uh, for all things so here basically paul is talking about an athlete okay uh, an, an athlete who you know um uh, who exercises who focuses on what he has to do disciplining his body by eating right sleeping the right time you know doing the right kind of exercises uh, uh, watching the right kind of entertainment um, and you know he's why is he doing it so that he can win a race or you know get a uh, medal so paul is telling similarly just like an athlete does so much you know foc he's focused on what he has to do you know he's training he's disciplining himself in every way even the area of food his entertainment uh you know he's exercising he says the same way you know we need to train ourselves in godliness just like you know when we are bodily uh, godliness when we train our body when we exercise our body it profits us how does it profits us it keeps us energetic it keeps us fit uh, you know it keeps us uh, going um, and it gives us a good uh, you know life ahead of us uh, so when the people of the world do so much you know just to train themselves to win a medal or just to keep fit or to keep strong so that they have a long life then you know how much more we need to train in the area of godliness or holiness uh, or in the spiritual things of god because uh, paul is saying here that you know that godliness training in godliness um profits us not only in this world that means we don't only receive the blessings we don't only live in the blessings or see the blessings here now in the present but it also is something that we receive in eternity uh, in the world to come uh, we will reap the uh, blessings so similarly to as we develop and um, grow uh, and train our bodies we also need to develop and grow in godliness uh, we must be willing to train ourselves even though training can be very difficult uh, strenuous uh, requires a lot of uh, sacrifice it's uh, discipline and a hard work but we need to do it because it has benefits both in this life and the life to come okay and when paul says that uh, this is a truth that is worthy of all acceptance which means you know all of us should embrace this and we all need to readily um, accept it okay what do we need to accept or readily uh, uh, accept is that you know that our spirit man can grow from one level to another uh, you know and the same way we can grow from you know from being in one level of godliness to a higher level of godliness holiness as well so what helps us to train in this area of godliness and holiness or in the spiritual um in our spiritual growth or what helps us to train our spirit man it is when we read god's word uh, because god god's word builds us up 
uh, not only reading it, but also meditating on it so that we can grow in it. Uh, also praying, you know, we know that Jesus prayed, you know, throughout the night. So the, these spiritual disciplines of uh, reading God's word, meditating on God's word, and also, you know, praying will help us uh, grow. And as I said, training is not going to be easy. But, uh, you know, we need to make a conscious effort. We have to put away old ha habits, grow into new habits. And uh, all of this is going to benefit us in the life to come. We'll move on to verses 10 to 11. So can somebody read First Timothy chapter 4, verses 10 to 11, please? Can somebody else read First Timothy chapter 4, verses 10 to 11? For to this and both level and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those who believe that these things commanded and teach. Okay, Amen. thank you. So he's saying... Uh, uh, you know, standing up for the truth, teaching the truth, preaching the truth in the midst of false teachers who are there in the church. And also, you know, those who are leaders, uh, so-called church leaders are also, you know, have gone away from the truth and are teaching this false teaching. It's not going to be easy, Timothy. Uh, it's going to be very, very difficult. But Paul is telling Timothy, you know, you need to stand up for the truth, you know, uh, you know, you can, you will suffer for standing up for the truth, but you need to focus on God. Okay. So he says, for this end, we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God who is the savior of all men, especially for those who believe. So as ministers of God, you know, we are laboring. Uh, and what is our labor? Labor is to teach and preach the gospel, uh, the word of God, the truth in God's word, establish God's people in the words of faith and sound doctrine. And, uh, you know, not only preach it to others, but also, you know, we um, uh, meditate on it. We also exercise that in our lives. And as we labor towards this, we will suffer, suffer reproach. That means people will speak bad about us. Uh, you know, they will look down upon us. They will mock us. Uh, but, you know, he assures Timothy, you know, you know, who are you trusting in? Your trust is not in man, but your trust is in the living God who is your um, savior. And in verse 11, he says, these things command and teach. So he's encouraging Timothy to command and teach. To command means to instruct clearly. Okay, to instruct, give clear instructions about what is the right doctrine and Command also is not just instruction, but it also requires obedience uh, to God's word. Uh, so even as people are listening to what Timothy is teaching them, they should not just be listening, but they are also required to obey God's word. Just as Timothy, you know, he before he teaches, he also has to uh, meditate on it, and he also has to make that part of his um, obedience by living a life that is holy and according to God's word. So command is to instruct and also it requires obedience to God's word that is being taught. And he says, say these things, you know, uh, boldly. Don't mince the truth. Don't try to cover it up. Don't uh, uh, to try to compromise the truth uh, so that people will follow you, so that uh, your people will like you, uh, you know, you'll receive favor. Uh, and, uh, you know, he says, don't do that. You know, just speak the truth as it is very clearly um, and live the truth so that when people see you living the truth, uh, they will learn themselves and they will follow in your footsteps. We'll move on to verse 12. So can somebody read verse 12, please? Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in life, in love, in faith, and in purity. Thank you. 
So here he says, no, uh, don't let anyone look down on you, Timothy, because you're young. Now we need to understand that, you know, Timothy was just in his 30s um, and there were leaders already there at the Church of Ephesus, you know, nine years before uh, Paul had come there and he had, uh, you know, appointed leaders. So there were people who are older to Timothy who were there, people who are already leaders in the church, recognized leaders. Now, if Timothy has to go and uh, tell them, this is what Paul is saying, this is what we need to do. He's teaching the right doctrine. He's not accepting the false doctrine that some of these teachers were uh, saying. It's not going to be very easy for him. So he's saying that uh, Paul is telling Timothy that, you know, though Timothy was young, he's encouraging him. He says, be an example to the believers. How can you be an example? By not only preaching, but also, you know, living out uh, the truth uh, or the word of God in, through your very life, through your lifestyle. So as leaders, he should, he, as a leader, he should set the standard and he should be the role model. When he does that, then those who are looking up to him will not uh, mock him or will not look down on him and say that he's young, he's immature, he cannot uh, do anything. The same way, you know, we might be young, uh, we might be young and doing ministry, but, uh, you know, we should not give uh, people a chance to point um, a finger at us, uh, be it in our teaching, in our doctrines, or mostly to the way that we live, okay? Because people are watching uh, our, our, our lives, the way we walk, talk, uh, the things that we do, our attitudes, our reactions. So he says, be an example in word, that means in speech, how you speak, how you respond. Uh, yes, people might uh, irritate you. People might say things that are negative. People may argue, fight with you, but how you speak is very important. So set an example in word, in conduct. Conduct means the manner of life, behavior, how he lives his life. In love, you know, loving people irrespective of um, who they are, what they are doing, whether they're good to you, bad to you, okay? Uh, spirit, the kind of person, you know, uh, the, the nature, the character, the very core being of who you really are, you know, uh, let it uh, radiate the, uh, the fruit of the spirit. Then faith means, you know, put your faith in God and purity is about holy living. So even as Paul is enlisting these things for Timothy, it's also something that uh, uh, is the word of God, it's the truth, it's revealed to Paul. And so it's for us as well that we need to set an example uh, to others, not only uh, uh, to believers, but also to our neighbors who are uh, uh, non-believers, you know, set an example in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity, okay? Uh, so it's not just about what we teach, how we teach, but it's about how we live. So he's saying, live right before God and man. That's something that he's already spoken of in the previous chapters, and he's reiterating here um, to Timothy, who is a young person and who is uh, leading the churches at Ephesus. Verse 13. Verse 13. Can somebody read verse 13, please? Till I come, give attendance yeah. to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Okay, thank you, Dave. So verse 13 says, Till I come, give attention to reading, to exhortation, uh, to doctrine. So he's saying, you know, pay attention to reading. That means read the scripture, public reading of scripture. Let people hear um, the scriptures being read to them. Uh, we're not uh, sure, you know, they had Bibles in their hands in those days. I don't think they had, uh, the early church had Bibles. They had these scrolls, scripts, but uh, we are very privileged. So, you know, they had to l listen to the reading of the scripture. So he says, read the scriptures in public. Exhortation means preach. You know, when you preach, don't condemn, don't put down, don't mock false teachers, false teachings, but preach to encourage, to inspire, to comfort people from scriptures, and also to confront uh, people the truth in God's word against the false teaching that is happening. And talking about doctrine, doctrines are basic, uh, you know, truths or topics like sin, salvation, grace, and all of those are called doctrines. Uh, so teach about the doctrines in the various doctrines in 
scripture. Okay, so these are the three things that must happen uh, in the church uh, that Paul, that uh, Timothy was overseeing at Ephesus. And this is something that we need to also do in our local church. We need to read God's word, preach, preach not to condemn, to put down, to laugh, to mock people, but preach to encourage, inspire and comfort people from scriptures because of the difficult times that we are in, the difficulties people are going through and people will just fall in love with God and his word. Okay, we'll move on to verse 14. Uh, can somebody read that, please? Verse 14. Do not neglect your gift, which was given you through a prophetic message when the body of elders laid their hands on you. Thank you. So it says, Paul's encouraging Timothy not to neglect the gift that is in him. That means the spiritual things that have been, uh, you know, imparted to him, uh, the gifts that uh, his, the, the gifts the Spirit that are imparted to him, he's saying don't neglect it. That means use it, exercise it, otherwise they will remain dormant. Okay, uh, so it's so important for us also, you know, uh, people, mentors, men of God, women of God have uh, imparted spiritual things to us. Um, we have also been baptized uh, in the in the uh, in the Holy Spirit. So don't, you know, uh, uh, let those gifts be dormant. Use it. Go ahead and use it. Don't let anything hinder you. Don't let unbelief. Don't let uh, you know what people will say. People will laugh. What if it doesn't come? What I want to prophesy? The word of knowledge, word of uh, wisdom. What if I say things and it's not truth? What if I pray for healing and people are not healed? But just go ahead and uh, exercise your gifts that have been imparted to you. And uh, when you do, you know. Um, uh, you will just flow in them and you will see the Holy Spirit working mightily in you. We'll move on to verse 15. Can somebody read verse 15, please? Meditate on these things. Give yourself entirely to them that your progress may be evidence to all. Thank you. So in verse 15, Paul is encouraging Timothy to meditate, which means to seriously ponder about these things. Think about these things. Keep on thinking about it. Act on it. Okay. Give himself entirely to do these things means act. Go ahead. Uh, do what uh, is required to do. And uh, if he does these things, then, you know, he will see growth and progress, uh, which will not only be seen by him, but will also be seen by the others in the church. So people can uh, we know and uh, see Timothy as a uh, 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 leader of God, the authoritative figure there, and also false teachers and false um, uh, teachings that are happening will, you know, just be out of the church and uh, false teachers will come again to the truth. So he says, you know, do all of this, you know, preach, teach, you yourself meditate on God's word, you yourself live out God's word in all godliness and holiness, train yourself in godliness and holiness, so that when others see it, you know, um, they will be able to, um, uh, you know, um, uh, see the progress and growth, and they will fall in line with God's word and his truth, and they will live lives that are holy and godly in his sight. The last verse, verse 16, can somebody read that, please? Take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this, you will save both yourself and those who hear you. Okay, so the final word, and that's something that is very, very important here. Paul is telling Timothy to watch over his own life and what he uh, teaches. Okay, so don't get caught up in all these false teachings. Uh, be very careful. Watch over your own um, life. Okay, and as spiritual leaders, uh, you know, we need this ability to be self governing with the and you know we need to help you need the help of the holy spirit and we also need um you know um the 
to watch over ourselves, our lives, the way we are living our lives, what we are doing, where we are going, what we are watching, uh, people that we're associating with, because all of these things can draw us away from God. So we need to watch our life, our doctrine. Um, we also need to watch what we are preaching and teaching. And, um, you know, we need to, um, we can do this with the help of the Holy Spirit. But just, uh, you know, as leaders, we can sometimes take on this responsibility of watching over the uh, flock of God or the sheep of, that God has entrusted to our care. And sometimes we neglect our own spiritual lives. So Paul is reminding Timothy that even though you have a lot of responsibilities, a lot of things to do, a lot of challenging situations, people to handle, you watch over your life first what you are preaching teaching and how you're living your life and when you do that you know there will be growth and um, progress and so hence we see that we need to protect ourselves um, and when we protect ourselves we'll also protect those who we are teaching who are listening to us who is entrusted to our care the flock under the care we will be protecting them as well okay so the key takeaway for this chapter uh, is um, chapter four chapter four is verse 12 be an example to the believers okay so just like paul is telling timothy as a spiritual leader you need to set an example in life in doctrine in conduct in speech in purity holiness uh, so that no one will despise you the same way as leaders we need to set an example in life um, in uh, conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. So those who watch us will uh, listen to, or hear us, will listen to us, and will uh, see us as leaders whom God has placed over them. Okay? Any questions? We have one minute before our break. Anyone has any questions, any doubts? No? Okay, if not, we will um, uh, go for our break and we'll come back after our break. Okay, thank you.